looking at the unboxing and review of LG's 86 inch 4K Smart TV. Now this is the 86 UP87 model. It is the year 2021 model, so it came out in 2021. So it's you know one of the latest TVs in this class from LG uh, in the affordable category. Um, if you want to get more information on what this costs and where you can get it, I do have links below this video. So enough chit chat. I'm actually gonna set this up uh, in my living room here um, and give you my you know my honest opinion on you know the the video quality gameplay because I really have this can't wait to play games on this bad boy and uh, yeah general overview. So with that said. Let's get to work. I strongly recommend and they even have a picture on the box that when you set this TV up um, get like a this is like a duvet or a quilt cover like nice and thick and always put it on a surface that is larger than the surface area of the screen of the TV I stress this a lot especially with these large TVs if you put this on a smaller surface than the TV you can end up damaging the TV and what's the best surface uh, then, then the box itself, right? The box is actually bigger than the screen. So put the box on its side. In my case, I just put like this nice thick uh, comforter quilt uh, on the top on top of the box and I put the TV you know, flat down on it. And that way now I can take my time and I can attach the feet to it and uh, get it ready to be uh, placed on top of the TV stand. All right, so that's what we're gonna do next. So along the bottom of the TV looks pretty much the same uh, with most of their uh, 4K TVs, no matter the size. Um, as you can see at the bottom, they have their built-in speakers um, right in the middle there. Um, there is a switch assembly, uh, the manual switch, just in case you don't have your remote. And right here along the edges, here's the one on the side closest to me, is the location to install um, one of the feet, right? And one of the things I noticed about this as well is that because of the size of the TV, I'm guessing, the back actually has a, hear that, a metallic feel to it. So it's like a metal back, which I would uh, understand because you want this thing to be as rigid as possible, especially if, uh, if, uh, for a TV of this size, right? I don't think plastic would be an adequate uh, back panel for, for something like this, of this size. And uh, of course, you have a power cable, and, and up there in the background there, we have our ports, which we're going to look at in a second. And right here, just to show you, here's the switch assembly, the manual switch assembly at the bottom of the TV in the center. So this switch is what you would use to turn on and off the TV if for some reason you did not have your remote, which I'm sure in most cases is very rare, but at least you know where it is. Now for a TV of this size, surprisingly, the thickest part of the TV is just under two and a half inches, which is pretty impressive. Again, for an 86 inch uh, TV. For a TV of this size, it's surprisingly slim. So at the thickest part, it's just under two and a half inches thick, which is pretty impressive for an 86 inch uh, TV. Let's take a look at the ports. So on this side of the TV, um, you can see we have four HDMI ports and one USB uh, port. So starting from the top, one USB, we have HDMI 1, HDMI 2, and then here, these ports are a little more special. So this port 3 um, also doubles as an EARC slash ARC port, 
and this is port four. And in addition to you know uh, the fact that you know this is an EARC slash ARC port, uh, these two ports also operate um, uh, 4K mode at a refresh rate of 120 hertz, right? So you get 120 hertz at 4K on these two ports. So these would be ideal for if you're playing, you know, high-end video games like PlayStation 4s, PlayStation 5s, whatever. Uh, anything with that type of level of performance, you need that type of uh, high refresh rate for that type of um, resolution, these two ports are that it could be that. But in all, you get four HDMI ports on this side and a USB. And then over along the bottom side, we have here our optical digital audio out. That's for your, you know, your nice high-end um, surround sound system and I strongly recommend you do get one especially with a TV of this type right? and here so here we have our RS-232C port here's our LAN port for those of you who still need to have a wired connection maybe to the internet because you have your um, router very nearby uh, or for just connecting to your local area network if you have one of those in your in your home or office um, here's your of course antenna cable in port and here we have two more USB ports, right? USB imports. So of course, USB is great for if you want to provide, uh, you want to get access to multimedia that's on a memory stick or a hard drive or whatever you want to play it on your TV. Um, these ports come in handy for that. And of course, if you need to just provide, uh, if you need a, a local power source, uh, these USB cable um, ports also provide that as well. <clears throat> So what I like about the design of these ports as well, they don't face outwards like that because you know if you're going to put this on a wall, you don't want to have you need you don't want to have to worry about wall clearance, right? So that's one thing, and because these ports are actually recessed, right, by roughly I guess an inch, you know you don't have to worry about cables, um, you know rubbing up against the wall or whatever. You have space in here to actually have your cable set connected into your ports. There's no pressure on the ports from the wall if you're going to wall mount this because they're you know the angle of these ports are facing, I guess, parallel to the, the wall, if you put this against the wall. So um, it's a really cool design right uh, throughout in this L shape here. So here are the contents of the box outside of just the TV itself. So we have here's registration, uh, warranty information. We have a magic remote user information guide. We have the user's manual. Here we have some cable management, right? Cable management uh, solution here, these little things here. Um, you get a set of AA batteries. I never use these. I always recommend just buy a brand new set of like um, alkalines or rechargeable set of batteries. But if you don't have time to do that and you just want to rip the TV out the box, get it working, you can use these as an intermediary. Uh, we have the uh, their special remote here. Uh, I think they call this the magic remote. And here we have the feet because I'm actually going to install this on the feet. Now the feet, a couple of things. One, they have rubberized bottoms because you don't want your expensive uh, piece of uh, entertainment hardware sliding off the table. And I just kept this here because these particular feet, they are designed for LG series TVs that are 70 inches, 75 inches, 82 inches, or 86 inches in size. This, of course, is the 86 inch. And one other thing to note, you know, uh, when you compare these feet to the, the feet on the smaller TV, there's one big difference, and that is this. I don't know if you can hear that, but this is actually metal. This is metal, and you need strong metal feet to hold up large screen TVs like this one. And here we have the screws uh, for the feet, and I believe there are six screws in here, so three per feet, and these are pretty big ones, pretty big screws, obviously, right? To hold in the metal feet into this large screen structure. Now, just in case you're wondering, these feet are not labeled left or right or AOV. They're pretty much identical, right? So it doesn't matter which side you put these on uh, because they are identical. So to install them, it's pretty straightforward. There's three holes here. You just line them up with the three holes on there. You put this inside the slot right here. And then just bring this TV forward a bit. So it sticks over the side of, the, of my little table here. Like that and I'm just gonna insert three screws and screw them in it's that simple ladies and gentlemen it is that simple so let me just get these screws out of this little bag here if I can get it open and uh, three screws 
Now, a lot, with a lot of these things, don't over tighten. Uh, ideally, you should use just a regular screwdriver. I'm going to use a powered one because I'm lazy. But uh, just uh, screw them in until it stops moving, and then you just stop screwing them in. That's one. Now, you see how long it's to the screen because this is a big, big TV, so you need these screws to be in way up inside the chassis. Okay, so that's it. So I'm just going to do this on the other side and we're good to mount the TV. The other angle, like right inside, so you can see how all three screws are in place. And that's that simple. Now just in case, you know, if you didn't believe when I said that these are metallic feet. So you hear that? Metal on metal, baby. So this uh, TV also came with a very intuitive quick start guide and what I love about quick start guides, there are no words, it's just diagrams, tells you how you should unpack it, that you should use two people obviously for a TV of this size and it even shows you how to install those cable managers I talked about and I'm going to show you how to do them, they're pretty pretty straightforward. All they are are little pieces of plastic that you put near the feet to actually keep your cables in, in check when they come down, right? Because one thing you don't want you know, with a lovely TV like this, especially when you have it on the stands, we don't want to see wires dangling from behind it. So these little cable management systems uh, keep that in place, right? Keep those wires in place. And on the other side, this talks about the port configurations and what they use for and how to install batteries in the remote. All pretty intuitive. Okay, so we have the TV mounted on its legs and we've put the whole TV in and put it on the TV stand. Now I strongly, 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 strongly recommend you have at least two people lift this TV up and put it on the stand because it's big and it's heavy. So that's number one. And um, now number two, if you are deciding to actually wall mount this, you can because it does have the correct specified, uh, the correctly specified base amount uh, holes in the back here with the screws. Um, now just one point of mention, and this should be common sense, but I'm just gonna still mention it. You know, when you do, if you do decide to wall mount this and you're going to use the TV mount for these glass screens, one, make sure that the mount is rated for the right size TV. This is an 86 inch, so make sure that the, the mount can handle that size of a TV and, and, and weight. And two, when you do mount your TV mount for your flat screen, please ensure that you mount it on the studs behind your drywall. And you can get a stud finder from any hardware store like Home Depot or whatever, they're very cheap. And there, you know, it's ID. You definitely need the stud to, to install the, the the wall mount on those studs, right? Those two point, I think it's two by two by six studs behind that are behind the drywall. Because these bad boys are big and heavy, and you don't want this thing falling off the wall, right? It's a big investment, and it could be very very a traumatic experience if the TV falls while you're watching Iron Man, for example. Anyway, so just want to mention that. So what we're gonna do next? Uh, I did come with these, as I said. Little pieces of plastic. These are actually cable. It's a cable management solution. I'm going to show you how to use those. This is a little piece as well is also a little cable manager for your power cable. So I'll show you how that works. And one other thing is you have a little wire tie, and of course, if you have multiple cables, you know the wire tie is good to keep them all together, right? And these pieces of plastic help ensure that right now, as you can see, this power cable's hanging down here, right? I can plug this into the wall. But when you look at your TV, you're going to see this wire from the front. And it's going to look unsightly, right? So that's where these little pieces of plastic, complements of LG, come into, be, into play. So I'll show you how to set those up right now. But just, just but, but by the way, before we go any further, look at me compared to the TV, right? I'm an average size guy, right? And uh, it's a big TV. <laughs> so that you don't have cables, because I have an HDMI cable from across over there 
I have this power cable. You don't want to have these cables hanging down like that because when you're watching the TV from the front, you're going to see these cables. So what's cool about this little piece of plastic here is you can simply take one of these, so there's two of them, one for over that side and one for over here. You simply, see this little hole here? There's a hole above the, the foot here. There's one on the other side as well. You simply plug this in, push it in like that. And now you can just put your cables directly behind this uh, cable manager, right? Just like that. And actually put one on this side, how about that? So now, and then you can then have these cables go along down your foot like this. So from the front now, you don't really see cables hanging down like that, right? So it's a cleaner install. Then the cable tie comes in handy just to keep all your cables nicely bunched together like so, right? I just have two here, but if you have, of course, you know, your, um, your surround sound system and other game consoles like your Xbox, PlayStation, whatever, you're gonna have multiple cables coming out from behind here. So that cable tie keeps those cables in place. So it just, just shows you how those little pieces of plastic that you thought was just junk that you're about to throw away, how important they are for your cable management. Compliments of LG. So here's a remote, pretty standard looking. Uh, what I love about it, it has a nice simple ergonomic design. There's a little curve in the back so that it feels nice when you hold it in your hand, right? Designed to, you know, for your index finger to fit inside there and it feels nice. So you can access all your buttons and stuff. And then of course, you have that you know, familiar piano black look, right? Now to change the batteries, I'll put them in the battery well. It's pretty straightforward. There's a little diagram that shows the orientation of the batteries. Two double A's, click right in place like that. And you're good to go. Now obviously, just from a quick overview of the button layout, we have our power button here. We have our you know numeric keypad. Um, and then here we have our you know volume up and down buttons, all rubberized. We have your channel up and down button here. Um, here we have, you know, mute button. This button here is for your voice assistant. So this does come with, you can install Google Voice Assistant, um, Amazon Alexa, um, and there's a couple others as well in there as well. Uh, and we're, we will go through those when I actually turn on the TV. This is your home button. Here is your input button for your, your source input button. So obviously if you want to toggle between you know, regular TV or you have your game consoles, you know, HDMI 1, 2, 3, 4, that's where you select the input. Here's the, that little hole at the top. That's the, the microphone that you speak into when you use your, your voice assistant button, right? Which is that mic. Here we have a little trackpad. Well, it's a, tra a little click wheel. It actually moves up and down, you hear that? That's the click wheel, rubberized. And then you have this circular thing, but it's actually a directional controller. So click left, click right, click down, click right. They're clickable. We have a back button here. Uh, we have our, um, here you can check out your options, your settings, you press that. And then now here you have your familiar uh, multicolored um, coded keys. And then here we have our quick uh, quick access buttons to popular services like Netflix, Prime Video, you have Disney Plus here and LG channels, right? Um, and there's two other buttons down here as well for other, uh, um, other services that you can get access to uh, uh, right off the bat. Now, yeah, so it's a standard remote and you're gonna see a really cool feature that I love with the LG remotes. And it has this, it's like a magic wand where you just point this at the TV and you don't have to press any buttons. You can actually see a cursor that moves uh, around the TV with this magic wand, I guess, uh, kind of um, use case. And it makes it very, very easy and intuitive to navigate the screen. So I'll show you that once I turn the TV on. Anyway, that's the remote. That's how you put the batteries in. And of course, there's the LG logo. Good stuff. So as you can see, this 86 inch LG 4K TV, it's a lovely TV. Full sized and like you get a real immersive experience uh, when you watch this thing, right? And as you can see, it's huge, right? Uh, this is this regular HD content coming through here and it's crystal clear. But you can just imagine, you know, with 4K content, you know, with the naked eye looking at this thing, it's impressive. Um, what I like about LG is their menu. So uh, I've, I've shown you this and this is a feature that is synonymous with most modern day LG devices when it comes to their remotes. 
they have this kind of a uh, little mouse type uh, set up here where you can actually move this this uh, the cursor right and easily access your content and I find that's really cool right you just use the click button on here to select so I can go down here for example and I can look at my app list here I can go back here so when I press the home button you get this interactive menu here which I find is really really cool where you can actually have along the top you have different widgets so I haven't set it up yet but I can put a weather widget here there's a ton of other widgets you can put along the top you can search for content here by you know actor or genre uh, and then here you know this is another area for a widget and right now they're talking about you have a hundred plus channels now available on the LG channel streaming service and I have those all set up which you can get for free now as far as the streaming services is concerned you don't have to set it up to set up for you all you have to do is when you set up your TV for the first time ensure that you set up your you know your local Wi-Fi in the house to connect it to the internet and then it does the rest for you and along the bottom here is your app list right so it's usually populated by default with a lot of default stuff so like you know you have your YouTube Creative TV Apple TV Disney plus and if you want you can customize customize it and add your own app so I added my um, days and sports app this is a really cool app for sports so if you're into like NFL uh, soccer um, boxing and stuff this is a really really good uh, streaming service to have um, really really cool um, so let's go back here to my home channel here let's see go down so this is the days and channel let's go back here Right, so that's the so if you wanted to actually modify the apps list, where are you here? Um, oh, sorry, let's go down here, go back home. Right, so you can go here, and you can just press to the right, and here's where you can actually edit the app list. So I can go here, and then it's in here that I can actually add and move around stuff. So say I wanted to remove, move the Creative app, I can just press the button and move it up or down in the list, put it maybe next to Dazen, and that is that simple, right? Um, so that's how you modify your app list. And if you want to add apps, you can just scroll over here to apps, and when you press on that, oh, sorry, that's just editing the list. Let's go back over here. So when I'm in the main menu and I press on the apps, here's where you can actually access the entire apps library. And you can pick the apps that you want to show in your, your um, I guess your app shortcut line that we just looked at there, right? So you have all these apps, you have featured apps, um, you have um, entertainment apps, right? There's games as well on here. We have, oh, Tower Mercury, so it looks like a little run. Uh, we have news and info, and we have life. So you get all your cool widgets that you can set up, analog clock, fireplace, and then of course, you know, you need some kind of educational apps on here as well. So you get that all here, right? So let me just get out of this, press the home button, and we're back in the main, you know, I guess the main interface. We have your widgets, your, along the top. And then here is where it shows you all the content that's trending now. So stuff that's trending in all the streaming services. Um, and even for your like over the air TV, like your you know regular TV channels, you also it also shows you you know what's live on those channels and what's trending, right? So right now channel five has you know this this TV show here with with, with uh, animals, vet on the hill, right? So it's really cool. And if I scroll down here, here's where you can actually get access to your home dashboard, connection guide. Um, to configure your airplay, this is your live TV. This is where you can actually go and scan for channels. Uh, if you have um, a digital antenna, like I do, you can get free over the year TV digital. And obviously, you know, I have my, you know, my game console. So I have my Xbox One on there. I have a media server. I also have a, a PS4, but it's turned off. But if it was turned on, it would actually, oh, it's right here. It would actually go from a grayed out box to a white box because that's my PS4 console. And there's an on, online, online user guide as well, right? So it saves from trees. And here, it shows all of my frequently viewed channels. So here is where you see all of my like, over-the-year TV channels. And it even shows you what I like about that. It's a really cool feature where if there's a show that's on right now, 
there's a little bar that shows you how far you're into that show. So this this is like a like Night Riders on, right? A retro 80s show, and it's about you know maybe what five ten minutes in. So it's really cool. And then down here you can see all of the free um, streaming channels from LG, and here's some web browser recommended sites. Amazon Prime Video, YouTube content, Apple TV content, new releases. So what I really love about this, this interface is that you can just sit back and with this nice point and click feature, you get access to all of your content, be it you know, over the air um, channels from your regular uh, local TV broadcaster, broadcast stations, your streaming content, you get access to your game consoles, everything in one nicely tiled interface with you know the widgets that you can con configure right um so it's a really nice experience and again if you know me i like my big tvs this is a really really nice tv to have uh you know in like a, a living room or you know in a, a movie room right So this was the review of the 2021 model. This is the LG 86 inch 4K UHD TV. Um, it was really, really cool uh, remote that has this nice point and click feature. Um, and as you can see, you know, in, you know, it's it perfect for like a living room setup or if you have, um, you know, a movie theater uh, type room uh, in your home, you know, a lovely large screen TV like this that shows, you know, really, really great 4K quality. Um, and it's ideal for gaming as well, right? 120 megahertz uh, uh, refresh rate for the if it's uh, for some of the HDMI ports on the back. Um, it's ideal, uh, an ideal TV to get 
especially right now because I think we're about to be in the Christmas season right now so this would be the perfect time to get one of these I know right now we do have a chip shortage worldwide so check with your you know I do have a link below by the way this video where you can actually get this TV so you know if you're interested go check the link out check out uh, more on the TV go get it for yourself and uh, yeah so that's it that's the review and guys you know this leave some comments below let me know what you think of this TV the whole setup and everything and uh, also let me know what other TVs you want me to do reviews on, right? Uh, so that being said, guys, happy gaming and stay safe. Bye-bye. So I hope you enjoyed that last video. Now, if you liked this uh, video and you liked it, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And if you subscribe to, to my channel, I am appreciative of that as well. So thank you very much. Um, so listen, there's going to be a lot more content coming out this year and beyond. Um, I plan to be doing quite a few different types of reviews. And I'm also starting to do giveaways now, finally. So that being said, happy gaming and stay safe. Bye-bye.